Tuesday, April 29th. The streets of Saigon, usually jammed with traffic at the morning rush hour, are quiet. The attack by communist aircraft at Saigon's Tansunut Airport the day before has prompted a 24-hour curfew. And the only people on the streets are ambulance drivers and policemen. Americans and citizens of third countries who have been guaranteed space on the airlift gather at assembly points for the bus ride to Tansunut Airport. Marines use smoke to signal helicopters they should land on the lawn behind the embassy walls, where they would be protected from ground fire. For the frightened civilians, the first few hundred feet were the most dangerous. After that, they were out of range of rifle and pistol fire. The hardest part was the waiting. Many people said it was unnerving to be waiting for a ride to safety and to be hearing fighting all around you. There was always the fear that the fighting would end the helicopter. Those South Vietnamese not lucky enough to have been chosen for evacuation defied the curfew and stood outside the embassy gate, begging for a seat on the helicopters. Many of these people have relatives in Canada. Some carried visas issued by the Canadian embassy in Saigon. But for most, it wasn't enough to get them a ride out. Embassy officials feared the crowd might again storm the gate, so they called in Marine reinforcements. The tension mounted as more and more Americans arrived in the compound and began the nerve-wracking wait for a way up. Enemies remained at the embassy gate hoping against hope that they too would be evacuated. But for them, there was to be no flight to safety. 